Welcome to this video in which we will share the key findings from an international deep dive knowledge sharing project on the topic of regulatory experimenting, such as regulatory sandboxes, that can be used as levers to accelerate the energy transition. My name is Helena Lindqvist, and I'm part of the Regulatory Sandbox project team within ISGAN, the International Smart Grid Action Network. I will be guiding you through this video in which we will share our key insights from this project in the form of four policy messages uh, to the clean energy ministerial community. First, you'll get an introduction to the topic and why it matters so much to the energy transition. And you'll also get a glimpse of how different countries are working to develop sandbox programs and similar regulatory experimenting. Thereafter, we will go through the highlights of the four policy messages, including short comments from some of our project participants. I will now hand over the word to Magnus Olofsson, Swedish national expert to Annex 2 in ISGAN, to make a short introduction to ISGAN and to the Regulatory Sandbox project. Thank you, Helena. The International Smart Grid Action Network, ISCAN, is a strategic platform to support high-level government attention and action for the accelerated development and deployment of smarter, cleaner electricity grids around the world. Established in 2011, ISCAN is an initiative of the Clean Energy Ministerial, as well as a technology collaboration program of the International Energy Agency. ISCAN provides a structure for international collaboration to advance the energy transition with particular focus on the role of smart grids. One of the flagship initiatives of ISCAN is the knowledge transfer platform in which countries engage in deep dive collaboration projects on topics of mutual interest to share knowledge and co-create new solutions. The ISCAN regulatory sandbox project has been developed within this framework. The regulatory sandbox 2.0 project builds on the insights and results from a previous international knowledge exchange on sandboxes two years ago in which ISCAN joined forces with ISER the International Confederation of Energy Regulators. The focus question of the current project has been on how to maximize policy learning from regulatory experimenting, such as sandboxes. Using the well-established, structured and interactive approach of the ISCAN knowledge sharing platform, the project has enabled deep dive dialogue on regulatory experimenting among policymakers, regulatory bodies and research actors from 15 countries on three continents. The innovative project design included a series of interlinked international workshops combined with stakeholder dialogue at national level to allow for customization of insights to different country contexts. So far, the project has resulted in the policy messages to the Clean Energy Ministerial that we present in this video, but we will also share our insights through an ISCAN Academy webinar on the 10th of June and an updated casebook on regulatory sandboxes. The policy messages that we present here today are the result of an inclusive and transparent co-creation process with our project participants during the course of the project, taking into account experiences and lessons learned from many countries. This process was made possible through a very close collaboration in the regulatory sandbox project team involving four ISCAN annexes. The team boasts expertise in energy and smart grid, transformative innovation policy, as well as design and facilitation of structured knowledge sharing processes, all of which have been instrumental to the success of this project. Thank you. Now let's hear from our project team members, Dirk Bauknecht and Klaus Kubetschko, who are the real experts in this field. They will give you an introduction to regulatory experimenting and regulatory sandboxes and why this is so important for the energy transition. So what are regulatory experiments about? Generally speaking, regulatory experiments can be defined as a way to deliberately deviate from the existing regulatory framework that is currently in place and to try out new or different rules and to try them out in practice, um, to try them out in a real-world setting rather than, for example, uh, in a model and really to see how it works out in practice. Such regulatory experiments can complement conventional approaches of piloting technological solutions. Um, there's a broad range of different technological experiments, pilot projects, demonstration projects, but often 
And typically, this happens within the existing regulatory framework. Um, and the idea is that regulatory experiments can allow such technological experiments to go one step further. And the idea is that regulation actually facilitates innovation also with such regulatory experiments. What is important to note is that there are two types of regulatory experiments. There's actually a, a broad range of, of different approaches. We will come back to that later. But there are two important functions of regulatory experiments. On the one hand, they can provide a framework for social technical experiments. So there are new technologies, new business cases, or social innovations that you want to try out. And for that, you adapt regulation so that these new uh, approaches can actually be tested to, to their full potential. On the other hand, there are regulatory experiments where regulation itself becomes the main object of experimentation and learning. So the idea is really uh, to try out new rules, to learn about these, these new rules as such and uh, how they work in practice. And that also means to learn uh, for future uh, regulation and how it needs to be adapted. Here are some results from the survey we conducted prior to the workshop series on activities, initiatives, and funding programs in the area of smart grids. Currently, there are about 12 countries who either have started regulatory experimenting activities in their energy sector, those on the map in yellow, or countries who are in the face of implementing new programs, those in orange. Topics and thematic areas of innovation, which are most often named by innovators as well as policymakers are integrated systems and the coupling of the electricity system and grid with other energy vectors, energy storage and other measures such as in electromobility to make use of variable renewable energy sources, flexibility services and energy communities and behind the meter solutions, which are important for a people-centered clean energy transition. The goal of regulatory experimenting activities can be different. All countries in our small survey aim for innovating new technological solutions, products or services. Some allow for the testing of whole new business models which might become mainstream in the future. Others aim for experimenting with new tariff models. And increasingly, the testing of new regulation is aimed for. So who can actually learn through regulatory experimenting? We have identified and worked with actors and stakeholder groups such as innovators and researchers who want to make the step to experiment in a real-world context. Regulatory bodies and energy market commissions in charge of granting exemptions who, for example, want to learn about new tariff models or how to serve the needs of future consumers. Ministries and agencies in charge of an accelerating energy transition who, for example, want to learn what works and want to better understand innovation barriers. And finally, legislators, lawmakers in charge of providing legal framework conditions for the energy transition, who, for example, want to understand and anticipate implications of law prior to its permanent implementation. We hope that all these act groups can profit from the following policy messages. Many thanks to Dirk Bauknecht and Klaus Kubeczko for this great introduction. Now we will put this topic into a bit of context by hearing from some of our project participants from Austria, Canada, Finland, Germany, Italy and Spain. In Austria, we have set up a sandbox program that is ready to be implemented this year, with the first call for projects open uh, in autumn. Content-wise, uh, the program is focusing largely on smart grid innovations. And what we have realized through our participation in the ISCAN knowledge exchange is that the Austrian case is in some sense particular, as our sandbox program rests on three pillars. 
The first pillar is advice that is given by the regulator and the funding agency to the projects. The, se the second pillar is the experiment itself. And the third pillar is regulatory learning um, that is meant to take up insights from the advisory period and the experiments. Um, our program is owned by the Federal Ministry of Climate Action. And together with the regulator, we as the funding agency manage the program. What we expect is that through our sandbox program, we have an improved regulatory setup and a better innovation ecosystem. And that ideally has a positive impact on the transformation of the energy system. As we look to our net zero by 2050 target, we're considering not just how to make spaces for innovation, but how that innovation is assisting in developing pathways to scale solutions and facilitate energy sector transformation in Canada. We have leadership from provinces and territories in this respect. The Ontario Energy Board, the energy regulator for the province of Ontario, developed Canada's first regulatory sandbox for energy, providing guidance and opportunity for both private sector and electricity distributors. Another example comes from the Nova Scotia Utility and Review Board's newly created Innovation Justification Criteria, which is connecting greater learning from a federally funded innovation project back into the regulatory process. Natural Resources Canada's Innovation and Electricity Regulation Initiative will continue to study these and other examples of innovation within the context of energy regulation in search of collaborative program opportunities. We thank our international colleagues who participated in this ISDAN workshop series and generously shared many models and insight to consider as we embark on conversations with stakeholders in Canada about innovation and energy regulation. In Finland, we have had very good, very open discussion on need of regulatory sandboxes and on their role of bringing new innovations forward. For us, the topic is currently developing, so the ISKAN project has helped us a lot in understanding the variety of options here. For us, it's very clear that the societal goals linked to energy transition, digitalization, sector integration are creating new needs for new kind of experiments. We see highly relevant areas like energy communities, flexibility markets, coupling of electricity and distant heating networks, for instance. Our regulation has been developing well, and we are now considering more systematic approaches for running the experiments as sandboxes or other similar mechanisms. We also see that the EU-level frameworks have strong impact on our implementation nationally, and this underlines the role of international collaboration. So for us, the ISCAN project has been a great opportunity that has helped us a lot on our path. So what's happening in Germany with regards to regulatory experiments? Germany has just finished its major four-year demonstration program called Syntec, Smart Energy Showcases for the Energy Transition. And it included five major demonstration projects. And an important element of this has been the so-called Syntec Ordinance, the purpose of which was to test new technologies, procedures, business models in practice, and at the same time make sure that the companies, the participants, don't face any disadvantages, financial disadvantages, because they test these new solutions under the current regulatory framework. So it provided an exemption clause, uh, a kind of regulatory experiment. This has triggered a lot of debate and activity on how such an approach can also be used in the future, in, in future programs, and how it can be developed further. And for that, I think it's very helpful to have this international exchange and this international learning that is provided here with the ISKCON project. I've been very happy to participate in the works of ISGAN for uh, the policy messages on innovation. This group is, has been very active and uh, the results, uh, uh, I think, are extremely interesting. They are based on a active dialogue among several countries and several bodies, research bodies, regulatory bodies, uh, entrepreneurial bodies.
The topic of innovation is of utmost importance for us as regulatory authority. We, uh, in our country, the penetration of renewable is extremely high and is expected to be even higher in the next years. We already have a rather high percentage of uh, non-programmable renewable sources uh, and energy, and especially in special days like uh, summer, sunny Sundays, uh, there the situation is, is very critical, let's say, and therefore we must exploit as much as possible the renewable uh, and all the resources, especially active demand and uh, storage and so on. So innovation is really an important matter to cope with the transformation challenge in a, in a future-proof manner, let's say. That is the most important thing for us the sustainability of the system and uh, the economic uh, benefit for all consumers coming from uh, renewables and system transformation. So the regulatory authority is very keen in supporting innovation at different levels. We already have several kinds of pilot regulations. That means a, a regulatory framework that is um, introduced for the first time in a transitional way in order to cope with a novel in the system. And we launched a pilot regulation, for instance, for flexibility services, aggregation of the distributed resources, but also for uh, uh, dialogue between the smart meter and uh, the enormous devices, or even recently for electric vehicle recharges uh, Using smart meter, we want to give the possibility, give, give a signal for smart charging during night hours. So I repeat, uh, innovation is extremely relevant. And uh, we in Italy have good, already good uh, legal powers for that as regulatory authority, but this is not the same in all European countries. And therefore, I think it's important uh, to have a good uh, a baseline for all regulators able to introduce and foster innovation. Thank you very much. Different stakeholders in Spain are very enthusiastic about the developments of regulatory pilot projects or sandboxes. Spain has already approved the regulation of sandboxes, but is currently working on specifying the detailed procedures to approve such projects. The Spanish Association of Smart Grids, Futured, is working on proposing some guidelines for presenting sandboxes to the regulator, specifically on flexibility at distribution electricity networks. The ESCAN activity of sandboxes has contributed in Spain to initiate this national dialogue among a wide range of stakeholders to get aware about the international experiences and also the national challenges on the developments of sandboxes. The ministry and other stakeholders have also participated into international workshops and they have brought the discussion to the national context. Many thanks to our project participants for giving this short overview of how their respective countries are working with this issue in different ways. Now, when we have been introduced to the topic of regulatory experimenting and sandboxes and have put this into the context of some of our participating countries, it's now time for us to present the key findings from our project in the form of four policy messages to the Clean Energy Ministerial and the wider energy community. We will go through the most important aspects here in the video, but we recommend you to explore the policy messages more in detail on the ISCAN website. After each policy message, you will hear one or two comments from different countries on how the policy message is relevant to them. Policy message number one, models for regulatory experimenting. There is no one size fits all model. There is no one size fits all model for regulatory experimenting. It's rather a toolbox of different experiment types. Good practices are already available and cases come both from energy as well as from other policy fields. 
At one end of the spectrum are sandbox programs and sandbox support services. And regulatory exemptions are enablers to help innovators bring new products, services, methodologies and business models to the market. Policy learning is important, but tends to be less formal, with less accountability to the results of the experiments themselves. At the other end of the spectrum are regulatory experiments that are specifically designed to explore new solutions for evolving regulatory frameworks in a consistent manner with system transformation. Policy learning is a key driver of the experiment with greater accountability to the results of the experiments. Message number one says that uh, there is no one size fits all model for, for fostering innovation. Uh, there is no one single model for experimenting because there can be several types of regulatory experiments. In, in, for instance, uh, already in Italy, we had a first phase where mostly pilot projects at local level have been selected on a relatively small scale. And uh, we are now in a second stage where more large-scale rollout or even pilot regulation have been introduced. So there is a sort of spectrum, a spectrum coming from small programs like sandboxes or pilot projects to large uh, regulatory frameworks. In the, in the small cases, more the business models are tested somehow. Although in many cases there is already the possibility to experiment and most of the effort is to, to advise innovators, but in some cases regulatory barriers can, can be uh, uh, requested to be eliminated and of course derogation can be approved, can be allowed by the regulator under a severe, um, a severe test of their, or their benefit on a large scale. On the other hand, the regulator can design a new framework that we call pilot regulation. And uh, this is, uh, is uh, probably a, a, a solution that uh, helps all market players to, uh, to exploit their possibility of innovation in a, in a level playing field. So competition is ensured and also customer protection is ensured because these are two very, very important points. Policy message number two. Policy learning from experimenting for broader transition strategy. Regulatory experiments are about learning and are particularly strong if they are aligned with a broader transition strategy. A vision of a future energy system a strategic mission, as well as a clear agenda or roadmap, and competences should build the basis for designing innovation programs that support regulatory experiments. In order to maximize learning from the experiment, experimental design is key. The regulatory experiment should be designed and evaluated to learn about the effectiveness and efficiency of regulatory options. Without such a clear vision, just introducing regulatory exemptions makes it difficult to learn from the experiment for future regulation. Considering policy learning as the main aim of regulatory experiments, alternative regulatory options should ideally be tested. With such an aim in mind, introducing exemptions only on request of innovators who might not be interested in the benefits of testing alternative uh, regulatory options for the future energy system would reduce the potential learning effects. Therefore, alternative regulatory options should be tested rather than just introducing exemptions on request of innovators only. From the German example, the Syntec ordinance um, mentioned before, it can be said that the purpose of this was explicitly to learn from practical tests so that the existing legal framework can be updated. And for that, I would say it was also very useful to have this uh, Syntec ordinance as part of a larger program, which was uh, aiming at developing solutions for the energy transition. 
Before we started with our call for projects, we have implemented a stakeholder process in order to identify the most pressing regulatory barriers. And along with the RDI community, we have invited the representatives of the regulator and the lawmakers. And by that, we have provided a new platform of exchange that was more driven by a common goal of changing things for the better. That process went together with the amendment of the Austrian Renewable Energy Act. And a few ideas where sufficient evidence could already be shown by existing RDI projects, a few of those ideas could be taken up as suggestions for the design of the legal framework for renewable energy communities, for example. Policy message number three, broaden the range of actors. Regulatory experiments are all the more powerful, the broader the range of actors that gets involved, as well as orchestrated. Policymakers with a clear mandate always play a key role. Clearly defined roles for national governments, subnational governments and regulators are needed. The range of competences of national administrations varies significantly. For example, market regulation competences in larger countries are under the authority of states, provinces, territories or lender. Program owners and engaged regulatory authorities are encouraged to extend the dialogue to other stakeholders than regulated companies. It is recommended to also include stakeholders that are not considered as incumbent actors and stakeholders, for example, energy communities, cities and actors from other sectors such as the, the mobility sector. It's very clear that regulators and policymakers have the key role here, but the actual ideas and needs, they mostly come from stakeholders such as companies or researchers. When navigating the energy transition, New models and services often realize as joint development between stakeholders. Aspect of providing wide societal benefit also calls for multi-stakeholder models. So this development clearly requires wide participation of actors with open and transparent manners to enable fully new services. The activity organized by ISCAN has favored the national dialogue in Spain, including a wide range of stakeholders, in two national workshops and also the participation in international workshops organized by ISCAN. The regulator, the ministry, the energy agency, distribution system operator, the transmission system operator, the market operator, associations, research institutes and innovators have discussed the current challenges of the implementation of sandboxes in the smart grid transition. Policy message number four effective legal basis for regulatory experiments. Regulatory experiments for smart grids need an effective legal basis. Compared with pilot projects focusing on technological solutions, regulatory experiments are more demanding in terms of legal preconditions. Smart grid technologies often challenge the existing regulatory constructs and associated legislation, which was designed with a very different role for customers, utilities, and the private sector in mind. Legislators should entitle regulatory bodies where they aren't yet to handle some flexibility for experimenting, in addition to their principal duty to set the regulatory frameworks. Finally, where there may not be a legal barrier to regulatory experimentation, there may, may be a practical barrier in that regulatory bodies are often resource constrained when considering the pace of change being observed with the transition of the electricity sector. Regulators may require legislative or policy authority to properly resource these activities. As we do not have a general clause for regulatory experiments in the Austrian law, but nevertheless needed a solid legal footing for a regulatory sandbox, we had to integrate a special legal clause in the Austrian Renewable Energy Act. And basically, this specifies the preconditions for a sandbox in an energy-related RDI project. In a nutshell, uh, these are two preconditions. First, the project needs to be a fundable RDI project that has to be innovative and needs to contribute to the goals of the energy transition. And second, the sandbox can only cover exemptions or deviations for grid tariffs. This question about understanding opportunities for federal government is central. 
because in Canada, it's our subnational governments, our provinces and territories who have jurisdiction over natural resources and energy. Our initiative aims to understand how we might support pathways to scale the innovation that we invest in federally by more effectively complementing investment opportunities within the regulatory context of our provinces and territories. We want to understand how we might design and deliver our federal programs in a way which could enable regulatory experiments and provide valuable policy evidence in collaboration with provinces and territories. Many thanks to our participants for sharing their insights and putting our four policy messages into the context of their respective countries. Now I will give the word back to Klaus Kubeczko for some concluding remarks. To conclude, regulatory experimenting appears as an adequate policy measure and a leap forward on the path to an inclusive energy future. Regulatory experiments in the form of regulatory sandboxes can provide a framework for testing new technologies, business cases, or social innovations. There are also regulatory experiments where regulation itself is the main object of experimentation and learning. A vision emerged from the ESCAN workshop series wherein productive relationships between policymakers, regulators, and other stakeholders, each leveraging the capabilities and tools of the others, can accelerate electricity sector modernization and transition and leads to greater societal value. For policymakers, even more important than supporting technological smart grid solutions is what can be learned for shaping and orchestrating the energy transition. This ISCAN initiative was about how to maximize learning from regulatory experimenting, and we are happy to share this knowledge with you. Thank you, Klaus, for these concluding remarks. Now, we hope you're curious to learn more. You can explore the policy messages more in detail, they're available at the ISGAN website, www.iea-isgan.org. There will also be an updated ISGAN casebook on this topic, available in June. And we hope you'll join us for the ISGAN Academy webinar on the 10th of June at 2 p.m. Central European Summertime. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>